This video was made possible by Star Trek Fleet Command. This is what I've built over the last few weeks. It's a largely 3D printed cluster rocket with nine engines with a peak thrust of around 10 kilograms. Why have I built it? Well, one, because rockets are awesome, obviously. Uh, two, because I've not done a rocket project since the space shuttle catastrophe last year, which was a bit of a disappointment. Might be revisiting that in the, uh, in the near future. Three, I wanted to develop a standard system of uh, modular rockets that I could develop uh, in the future and build into many different designs quickly. It would be great to have a reliable workhorse rocket for future projects on this channel um, and one with a bit of oof so uh, that's why it's got nine uh, nine engines on this one and four finally i wanted to make a launch vehicle that you could build too so i've based the design largely around 3d printing which means that uh, you can print the entire structure uh, all of the internals and the nose cone and the motor mounts yourself you can make it any size you want so you can add more fins you can add more motors you can change the uh, the nose so you can have payload sections uh, yeah it's sort of an open rocket for you to do what you want with so this video is going to show you how exactly I developed this design from start to finish. We'll do a bit of ground testing and then we'll take it out to a test facility to fire it for the very first time. It should be interesting. The first part of the rocket that I designed were these fuselage formers. I got stuck into designing them on Fusion 360 and then printed them out on my Ender 3. Now while I waited for the parts to print I decided to uh, make some Earl Grey tea and to play some Star Trek Fleet Command which is the game that's sponsoring this week's video. I very much do enjoy Star Trek so I was very happy to check out this new free to play strategy game to see what it was all about. What I like is that you can be the commander of your own starship, free to explore space and devise strategies. Also being me of course and into building things you can build up your own starship and upgrade it to travel faster and, if necessary, to defend yourself against those cheeky Klingons. However, you can actually choose to be a villain rather than a hero, so I suppose you could fight for peace and to build a better galaxy for all, or you could just decide to try your hand at galactic domination. There are loads of different starships that you can build up and upgrade, such as the iconic Enterprise, of course. In real time, you can pit your starship against Klingon Bird of Praise, Romulan Warbirds, and loads of other iconic starships. If you want to get on board with building your own fleet with some classic Star Trek faces, species and ships, then make sure to check out the link in the description below, download the game and start your voyage into the final frontier. Again, a huge thanks to Star Trek Fleet Command for making this video possible. Okay, so these fuselage formers were made with lots of holes in, as you can see, and apart from making them look very space age, they are for passing dowels through. I know wood isn't exactly 3D printed, but I'm sure that you could design some sort of, uh, some struts if you wanted to on Fusion 360, print them out on the Ender 3 and use those instead. But I just thought it was, you know, what I had and didn't want to waste time printing stuff when I could just use some dowel. I thought this would be a really good way of making the airframe up as you could just add more length of the dowel and more formers uh, to make a longer rocket. And also you can make them in different diameters. So this one is a 50 millimeter ring and this one is uh, 100. So that might be for a smaller rocket or for a second stage up here. And also for fun, I printed off this uh, KSP inspired uh, command module which would uh, sit on the top of a rocket. It's not very aerodynamic, but I thought it'd be fun to make some KSP inspired. Uh, rocket designs. Now in case you're not familiar with model rockets, the way this whole thing works and how you get the rocket back is that the rocket engines fire in the bottom here, producing a lot of thrust, and then after a while they will produce some sort of ignition charge which will blast the top of the nose off, this will tug a parachute out, and then theoretically the entire thing will float down to the ground nice and gently. So. Fingers crossed that happens later when we test this thing for the first time. The nose was the thing that took the longest to print. It was about nine hours, I think, which was quite a long time. So I'm hoping that I get this piece back for future missions. Now the nose was a bit tight, this fit here. So I'm hoping that the nine ejection charges from the nine motors will uh, launch it off the top with no, <laughs> with ease. But um, yes, either that or the whole thing will explode spectacularly. And talking of the motors, the next problem is how do I ignite nine rocket engines all instantaneously? 
To make it a little easier to wire up the igniters on the pad, I decided to make this copper ignition ring. It's essentially a positive ring and a negative ring, with nine sets of crocodile clips soldered in between, in parallel. In theory, an equal charge would go to each igniter, but I wasn't too sure if the motors would actually go off at the same time. Obviously, I wanted to make sure that I could at least ignite two motors at once, so I did a little test the other day. Here's how that went. Right, got a good uh, testing facility here wall-to-wall -wall concrete so if anything goes wrong which hopefully it won't um, yes the the rocket engines aren't going to fly off anywhere which could be a problem this is the control box uh, you've got the missile switch here you have to keep that down obviously before you flick this one <laughs> this one is the, uh, the missile switch that arms the circuit and then this one is fire so uh, yeah I'm gonna use that just now hopefully they won't flip out and uh, take out that's why, that's why I'm using some duct tape on, <laughs> on them now to hold them to the ground. <laughs> I'm going to put my iPhone right next to it. I should really invest in some proper equipment, shouldn't I? <laughs> Steve Jobs is turning in his grave. Ready. Arming circuit. Oh. Yep. Armed. Three, two, one. <laughs> Very successful. Did both of them go off? I think they did, yeah, but not necessarily simultaneously. Yeah, that was interesting. Well, that might be uh, something to work on. Some some good uh, good readings we got from that experiment. <laughs> Now I have reviewed the footage a little bit since uh, since doing that test. The iPhone was shooting at 240 frames a second, I think it was. So it's down to a very fine margin. And we can see that frame by frame, they appear to ignite at exactly the same time as I scrub through this. So that's promising. Obviously this is just a, uh, a single test, not very scientific, not repeating the experiment. However, obviously these rocket motors cost money, so <laughs> I'm not going to do it with nine motors at once, which would be preferable. To see if we can ignite nine motors at once, I'm going to risk it on the very first test flight of this thing instead of doing uh, ground tests, because that's more exciting. Yes, we might have a problem with igniting them all at the same time, uh, but this shows that it's possible that they will all go off at once, and if they don't, then this thing only took me a week to make, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> now I had the rocket and the ignition system complete, I found that I needed some sort of proper heavy duty launch tower to launch this beast into the sky. Now I might have over-engineered the rocket uh, stand slash launch tower a little bit, but um, I thought it was probably worth making sure this thing is super sturdy um, and capable. The way that this works is pretty simple. You've got these launch buttons here. These slide onto the rail one at a time. And when it's slid into this slot here, it allows the rocket to move up and down, but it doesn't allow the rocket to fall out this way or anything, or go that way or that way. I might upgrade it later on. So yeah, if you want to give me your suggestions on how I can uh, improve the rocket stand, then be my guest, comment down below. Right, so now I have the rocket, the launch pad and the ignition system all present and correct and ready to go. It's time for launch. Let's go and see how this thing performs. All right, we're up here at the launch field. I've just hiked up here, um, it took quite a while. Um, and now we're in the middle of nowhere, ready to launch this thing. Now it might explode it might go up into the sky and the parachutes fail. We don't know yet, or I don't know yet. But uh, yeah, keep watching to find out what happens. I'm getting quite nervous. set up, we've got the cameras all set up, now it's time to launch. Ready, arming circuit, 10, 
9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Eject, 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 no! No! <laughs> oh, bollocks. <laughs> well, the parachute didn't work. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of work to do, I think. Let's see if we can uh, find the wreckage with the drone. Oh my goodness, that looked so good. <laughs> Just seeing the flames come out of the exhaust. There's like all nine engines all lit up. It's brilliant. It might be difficult. I can see a patch over there, but um, I don't know if that's it. I heard it go thud into the ground. That looks like it could be it, actually. Uh, I'm gonna go and stand over there so that I can get signal with the drone. Let me just summarize while we're finding the wreckage. That was, uh, I'm very pleased with the performance of the rocket. It flew spectacularly, but yes, obviously we've got some work to do on the uh, recovery system. Look at the carnage. <laughs> that is quite spectacular. I wish I'd caught that on film. Look at the amount of debris. <laughs> this is the only bit that stayed <laughs> relatively intact. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness, those ones didn't go off. I've just realized these ones didn't even go off. Look. Or at least that one didn't. Wow, that is quite amazing. Well, I better go and get the uh, the bag so I can <laughs> scoop all of this up from the uh, local environment. Concerning the ignition problem, even using two thirds of the available power, the rocket still flew like an absolute beast with plenty of thrust. When looking at the underside of the rocket from the GoPro shots, you can see that there's no flame from the far left and far right motors. Luckily, all three of the misfiring motors were pretty much opposite each other, meaning that the rocket's thrust line and CG were near enough aligned. I think the reason for the failure is that the three igniters were just too slow to get going Going, so the rocket took off and left them behind. You might be able to see from the GoPro shot again that these two motors lit at different times, which perhaps shows that the previous static test was a bit of a fluke. Next time we might not be so lucky with the launch, so I'll probably be looking into getting a more reliable ignition of cluster rockets for future launches. Alright chaps, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did like it, then click the like button, subscribe for more, do all that good stuff. I don't need to tell you what to do. Uh, check out the links in the description, I just did, but <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we'll be doing more rocket stuff, more aeroplane stuff, more hydroplane stuff, more helicopter stuff, more everything. Look out for more stuff coming soon, and yeah, I will see you then. Thanks for watching again.